Hi there, and welcome to episode 11 of the tutorial gameplay series for RimWorld. I'm Icon, and in this episode, we're going to dive deeper into the questing tut uh, tutorial things, and I will do things on the side which cross our way. My main interest today is to get that uh, rescue quest done, and there's so much to talk about that I'm pretty sure we will be busy the better part of this episode. So, before we do anything here, at the end of yet last day's episode, we had some corn plants going into Blight. Blight is a event just like a raid or somebody getting ill or whatever that can just happen from time to time. It's really important that you get rid of the blighted plants before the blight spreads. For this, you can get here into the orders menu, cut plants, and here you go. There's also mods I like to use which allow you to prioritize these jobs in a way that you don't need to click every single plant at, uh, at a time. But since we're uh, strictly playing vanilla here, this is what we have to do and this is also the reason why i love to use the achtung mod when i do play modded because with this mod there would be just a button right next to prioritize labeled force and then the algorithm would automatically try to find all similar jobs in the vicinity and force that person to do these if he's physically capable to do so but that's what we're doing here instead. One right click directly and then I was holding down the shift key while I was uh, right clicking all the other things. And that brings Pi to a point where uh, all that good, uh, all that lovely corn will go to waste. Very sad about that, but the thing about Blight is it will spread over, other, over to other fields. If you want to be really sure and safe from Blight, you can just uh, keep, a, keep a safety distance between fields. If I remember correctly, it was two fields, but I'm not entirely sure anymore if it wasn't three fields. So feel free to uh, add some wisdom into the uh, description below, into the comment section below, I mean, because I really don't know if it was uh, two grids or three grids anymore. But since I am a pro player who's uh, cutting away the blight always directly when it comes up, I never had too many problems, but if you have enough distance between your fields, it's technically not possible that the blight will spread over to the next field. Just wanted to uh, mention that because it might be interesting. So to rescue good old Smelly, we will have to do a caravan over to the place where Smelly, the incapacitated refugee, is lying. You see here, this is a so-called quest side and we have 9.1 days left to rescue Smelly before he or she will die. We don't know what kind of threat will be, there may be an unknown threat, so this is generally a pretty nasty situation to get into, because we could get ambushed quite badly. Because of that, I will equip Pi not with a rifle for this scenario, but instead with a shotgun because shotguns are really good for close range encounters. So we're going to send Bubbles and Pi over to the place where Smelly is lying around. So we're forming a caravan again, just like we did the last time. And as you see here, the distance is 1.1 days. So this is some longer trip to take. So we're picking up these two guys and we already see there's not enough food for the trip, for, for both uh, directions of the trip. So we're picking up some extra food. I'm also picking up some extra food for the incapacitated refugee because I know there will be somebody who will need help. So seven days of food, I think that will be enough. Now, I won't be picking up any other items here, so let's send them away. For some weird reason, the distance here is now down to 0.6 days, but that's okay. So they will now go over there. It would have been also a uh, not too bad idea to send Emmanuel down there too, but well, I don't. I really don't like to leave my colonies completely undefended. But if you are playing not in Iron Man mode, 
and if you are able to just save and reload whenever you want to. Well, save your game before you send the caravan off, and there's really nothing to lose anymore. Just saying. Okay, Manuel was just repairing the last few bits there, because repairing is part of the construction job, and then he tried to search for other works which are bookma bookmarked with priority one. Let's check out what uh, Bubbles and Pi are up. Well, they need half a day to get to over to this place. I personally consider these uh, quest sites which have unknown threats as some of the most dangerous out there, mainly because, well, it is quite easy to just uh, bite off more than you can chew. I'm going to explain more about that topic once once we actually get there. Meanwhile, Emmanuel is uh, fetching up the defenses pretty well. Once he's done with this uh, section of the wall, we will be even com completely walled off from this side, that side, and that side, which is quite massive. Every enemy which will come from here will then have to walk all the way around until he's here. So probably I will carve a passage in between here to make uh, the enemy movement a little bit slicker. It's not always good to slow down your enemies. Sometimes you don't want that. Just notice that there's some gold here. Lucky me. Gold ore is really the, the most rare thing you can find. Well, I think it's not too surprising, but... Okay. Here we go. Looks like Emmanuel is getting the job done today, if he didn't decide to play some chess. The automatic um, preference of your colonists is sometimes really, really odd. And if you want to see things really get done quickly, you should administrate them personally. Okay, we have arrived the incapacitated refuge, refugee side. So over here is Smelly, and the first thing you should always do in that kind of scenario is check out if that person is really worth the pain. So here, for example, I really don't see too many reasons actually to pick her up, but well, I'm that kind of guy, I really like to pick up colonists uh, always, unless they are absolutely horrible. But well, it's up to you how much perfectionism you want to uh, see there. But one thing's for sure, if you would just send your people now to the... Uh... Oh, that's also a modded thing. If you just would now get into the world menu and reform the caravan, you would abandon this side and... But we will play this one correctly, and therefore, let's go. So, the way this works, when there's an unknown threat around, usually that threat will spawn the moment the first person tries to get close. So, what I'm going to do now, and that's my standard procedure, is I bring whatever, uh, well however many shooters I have into position, and then one person tries to get close, and there's an ambush. So if you mouse over that uh, thingy here, you see the arrows are showing you where the ambushers are coming from. In this particular scenario, we're being ambushed by two bunnies. Yeah, bunnies. Well, that's uh, good and bad news at once. Good news because it's only bunnies, bad news because it's two enemies. So what I'm going to do now is the same thing I do always. Get the uh, attention of the enemy and kite it around. So here we go. It's, up on, it's on bubbles now and we're going to do the burden thing again. And so this is a uh, unfortunate scenario. But, you know, we're, we're just going to uh, leave that uh, bunny to Pi, because, you know, a shotgun cannot only, used, cannot only be used as a gun. In RimWorld, every gun can also be used as a melee weapon. And you see there's also a certain amount of melee damage, and see? It was enough damage to take down the bunnies. 
So depending on the strength of your uh, colony and the amount of time that has passed, these events can of course be more difficult. The next thing to do is to right click the per person that's down and offer your help. So there we go. And now Smelly is officially a part of our colony. The next thing to do is to reform the caravan and send them home. Whatever wounds that are on your people will be tended on the road. So you don't need to wait and tend out uh, wounds before you go. Of course, one thing's uh, worth mentioning. Like I said the other time, if you have the time and the manpower, always check out your environment. Sometimes there's an occasional gold or steel or plasteel deposit on these maps, you never know. It's always worth checking out because it's basically free resources if it is if if there's anything. If you can't carry them, that is. So I'm making sure that I'm picking up all the food here. For some reason, the automatic uh, food assignment would actually leave rice behind. So don't trust this uh, automatic uh, travel supply designator. It's uh, not really making optimal decisions. It's more like a lazy man's thing to do. Okay, so we're now sending our dudes back home. And since version 1.3, down people don't slow the caravan anymore. As long as there's somebody to carry the down person, the caravan is not being slowed down by the fact that Smelly can't walk. This is such a great update because in past versions, the incapacitated refugee quest was a lot harder because you had always to, to take into account that your way back home will be way, 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 way longer than the way towards there because the downed person was slowing down the caravan a lot. This is not a thing anymore, I just wanted to mention it to people that are new to the game. There's a lot of uh, good things happening here. So Fitz is hunting lamb too for food. So as you see here, the wild man that has wandered in lately is now assuming that he can just hunt my little lamb so we're going to wake up Emanuel and and nope that out because you know you're not going to break into my into my pen and hunt something. This uh okay this event that something hunts your your animals is not a storyteller event. That's just something that happens from time to time when uh, when entities grow hungry. But actually, Fitz seems to have changed his mind, plucking some berries now, and not feeling that brave anymore. Okay, so, well, the incapacitated refugee quest here can be played also with mechanoids and raiders. Sometimes there can be also raider complexes, bases, if you might want to say so. I want to get towards one of these missions later in the series, so we will try to defeat a bandit outpost later down the road too, because I want to talk about how to pull this off easily as well, because, you know, it's a good topic as well. But yeah, long story short, if you have this uh, out in the open scenario, that's how you can tackle it. I personally consider it very, very dangerous because you never know what will be against you. And more often than not, I even ran away when I saw that the colonist in question was not really worth the pain. Just, just want to emphasize that since you can check out the stats of the people in beforehand, like... Here, no more information available. Sometimes you just have to send people over there and uh, check it out without knowing what's up, uh, what's it going to be. And it's no shame to nope out the selection if you feel like that's not a worthy addition to your colony, because at the end of the day, you will be stuck with your colonists for quite a long time. But since everybody can le learn er uh, anything, I was quite okay with the with Smelly's skill set. I'm going to explain you folks in a second why, because she's not as bad as it looks. So I just noticed that we have no power over here. 
and download that component. So at the first glance, her skill set is rather meh, but there's two things I like. The fast walker brings extra move speed, which is really excellent in any uh, form of combat. The uh, second thing, she's a passionate person in regards of medical things. And I love to have good doctors, especially since Emmanuel is, well, he's passionate, but not really that good. Pi is a catastrophe, and Bubbles won't even bandage anybody. That was the main reason for me to say, hey, you know what? This is a person we can and want to use. So at the end of the day, you really need to find out for yourself if or what kind of people you will banish or or pick up in your colony. It's always a pretty difficult thing and well to have the most fun I always like to <laughs> oh, come on, guys I, to have the most fun I always like to pick up uh, people that are a little bit problematic. For example, to talk about problematic things, and that's also the reason why many people would not have picked up this character. <laughs> well, I'm talking about picking up characters. Pi is just carrying that good lady over there. I need her uh, bio biography to continue. So, the psychically sensitive trade makes her especially susceptible to psionics. That means events which come via well which, which influence the mood psionically will impact her heavier the good ones and the bad ones so that's one thing which is a little bit uh, problematic but you can also utilize that because whoever is psychically sensitive is also a really good spellcaster because they regenerate uh, i think they they get disposed of the cooldowns of the spell casts uh, quicker. I need to read that up myself again though too. But what's way more problematic here is the dumb labor um, incapability. So smelly won't ever do hauling or cleaning. So this is something which puts off a lot of people. But well to me it's okay. I'm going to use her workforce in the plants department. She learns slowly but that's okay. Four is enough to begin with and she's also going to get a gun and defend the colony because you might see her, her stats are really horrible but even without passions. If you let those people hunt long enough and shoot long enough they will get towards double digit uh, rank sooner or later and that's enough to really rely on these people okay enough of that the pirates from the fever society are attacking us that's uh, miriam and laura two people with access this time and they are again stupid enough to prepare themselves before they want to attack us so that's yet another opportunity where i want to pick up the rifle instead of the Revol um, shotgun, but I want to give the shotgun to Emmanuel because I feel like this is a very, very good thing to do. Okay, when you have down people in your colony, just a word of advice on the side, you need to have somebody with the doctoring priority higher on a higher level because otherwise your folks will not supply them with food, which can be quite dramatic. Okay. So, since my defenses are not available as of yet, I want to get close again. I, I got a uh, I got a large range, I, I got a high range rifle on me, and therefore I feel like it's pretty good. So Pi is on high break risk. We want to check out why. As you see here, Pi is very very hungry, and very bored. So in situations like these, it's way better to just call them off for a moment. And I'll call off that uh, offensive uh, altogether. They're supposed to eat something because there's nothing worse than people getting mental breakdowns while they are supposed to fight. So, Pi and Emmanuel are uh, grabbing some food now, which is quite good. Let's see, Bubbles is already sated. Pi wants to eat something too now. I'll have to wait for that. 
might be stupid, but sometimes stupid is necessary. Well, we don't have too many traps yet, so this is the only reason why this is a bit of a problem. But we will get there. I'm doing my, my usual uh, stuff. We're dropping down the burden spell here. And Bubbles is doing the kiting. So, waiting for Pi to consume the berries. Now the food meter is full. So now I can uh, bring Pi to this combat too. In this regard, Rimworld can be quite finicky. And you need... You might need some time to get used to these systems. And, well, if there would be friendly fire enabled, this would be a very, very bad situation right now. Not anymore now. Okay. So the first person is just downed. Easy like that. And let's bring Pi forward. And... Let's put a burden on Laura too, so Pi can get in a few, uh, few free shots. There we go. That burden spell is insanely powerful. Because it, it trivializes melee attackers a lot. That's alone a reason for me why I love to play with royalty. Because these uh, magic skills, for me, they, they add up a lot into the game. But, well, you, you can't uh, totally rely on what you're getting there. Okay, so we see here we have two more dead people. And they dropped some drugs, smoke leaf joints, and ambrosia. We say thanks for that. And Smelly is able to walk now. Hooray! So we have to configure her work schedule. Every new person in the colony needs to be configured like that. It's a pain, but you can't skip that. So Smelly is also a very good social person, so I put her up to the wardening duty as well. Art goes onto a very high priority for her too. Bubbles and Smelly are equally good at that department, so I de decide that Bubbles is no longer doing art. I personally never have more than two artists at once in a colony tops. Most of the time it's even only one. So this though frees Bubbles up to do more hauling jobs on the side, which will be at the end of the day very, very useful. So. I'm going to put Smelly now up to the plant duties, and therefore she will be helping our settlement a lot. Okay. So combats like these are a recurring event in RimWorld, and you better get used to them. You will get raided a lot. If that's bothering you, don't uh, don't hesitate a moment to to go onto a lower difficulty level because this game has such a high level of complexity that you don't need to be ashamed if you want to pick things up bit by bit or even skimp out of a certain aspect of that game entirely because if it's no fun for you why should you bother in my humble opinion sandbox games are absolutely meant to be played exactly the way you want them to be played so if you if you don't like a certain aspect of the game try to change it and i can only motivate you to check out the work the, the mod workshop as well because usually if you ask yourself if there's some if something can be done your question should rather be is there already a mod for it or not because rimworld's modding community is just amazing so let's check out what these uh visitors have in store maybe we can get something from them as you see here they're selling some goods herbal medicine short bows a steel crown well they also carry a low amount of uh, money on them uh, on them what i like to do is i like to sell off old junk items here to these uh, to these travelers but you can also get rid of these junk items differently so well just like I thought, there's nothing too amazing inside there, so we're going to skip out. You can also go over to the smelting bench, which we uh, built a while ago. Hmm, I never went to the smelting bench with you guys. Well, let's fill this episode with that topic. The smelting bench is where you recycle metals. Well, to some degree, it works very similar like the stonecutter's table. So you have builds for slag smelting from 
no metal smelting from slag so these uh, steel slag chunks can be transformed in, back into steel but you can also smelt weapons unlike destroying weapons at the uh, or generally destroying things at the crematorium a wind what's up ah there's fog unlike the uh, destruction at the crematorium the smelter can recycle goods so for the smelting of slag, my usual bill looks like that. Doing it forever and limiting in it to the region where I store my stuff. The weapon smelting job, that's an entirely different uh, cup of tea though. So there's a lot of different things how you can do that. I don't have a uh, standard procedure for that, but what I like to do is I, w I like to allow everything and I like to forbid everything non-biocoded. We haven't ran into biocoded gear yet. This got introduced with royalty back in the day. I don't know if biocoding is actually a non-DLC thing, but nevertheless, if something is biocoded, only the person it's uh, that's it, which it's biocoded for, can actually use that item. Overall, this is just a method of the game to lock you off, uh, lock you out of plundering really powerful weapons from raiders. So therefore, everything which is biocoded can be just smeltered away. That's why I have absolutely every check mark activated on every weapon here, because well, biocoded gear is of no use for you. But you can just smelt it away forever. Another thing which I like to do is having a spare bill where i just clear everything and for example now we have here steel axes now i i see that there are axes here and i see that there are knives here but there's also a steel knife well that makes things always a little bit difficult that's why i don't like generalized uh, jobs here so this is a little bit of a chore, but you can just uh, check mark knives and axes. And to avoid our to avoid that our steel knife here gets smeltered as well, we check out these items have all either poor or awful qualities. Same with the knives. And now we get over here and get to that slider and tell the game only to smelter everything which is of awful or poor quality. And this can be done also forever. What I like to do with this bill is eventually I keep adding things here. I keep adding, like for example, I find some equas which I don't like, then I add them. I find some spears which I don't like, then I add them. And the longer I do play this list or add things into this list, the more things I don't want to get just automatically flushed out. Just keep in mind that this quality uh, gauge here is a good way of just destroying bad stuff. But yeah, you know, the game is a little bit finicky on this side. Basically, if you want to keep good weapons safe, you better equip them to somebody or, well, configure item destruction builds very carefully. And as you see here, we're running out of power right now a little bit. And we researched quite some time ago some solar panels. So next episode, we're going to upgrade our power grid a little bit. Because that's something which is really necessary, as we see here. All it takes is a little bit of a foggy weather. And we can't, we can't really keep our energy powered here so there's also fits hanging around in my fields and uh, stealing my food the wild men are really annoying in this regard if you can't tame them actually it's most of the time even better to just uh, shoot them down what i'm going to do as the last thing uh, for today I'm to show you a little bit of something what you can do with these dudes so since I really don't want him loitering around here, and since I don't have anybody to tame him, what I'm going to do is now I'm opening fire. Sometimes it's absurd how bad people hit on even in close range. So there's two things which can happen now. Either Fitz will die from one of those attacks, 
or he's getting downed. That's what I was hoping for. So now we're all we're going to do is we're going to well find a prison cell. I can't imprison bits over here because. If you flag a room as a prison, every every bed inside that room is considered as a prison room. So we're going to bring Fitz over into the kitchen and, uh, well, maybe not into the kitchen. This is a hygiene room. <laughs> ah, yeah, the classic. Let them sleep right next to the crematorium. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to bring Emmanuel and rescue Fitz, or no, we're capturing him. Not rescuing. If you rescue them, there's a certain chance of them joining your co uh, colony, but there's no real guarantee. If you capture them, they are considered your prisoners and you can just, uh, well, handle that situation accordingly. Okay, so Emmanuel put Fitz down now, and we're now going to doctor this good friend here. So over at the prisoner tab, we see that, oh, we can't, wait a sec, I had no clue. Oh, forget what I said. This will only give us a uh, way of, okay. So I thought that you could uh, actually recruit that guy, but Obviously, we can only we can only tame him. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do, well, we have to do. But the thing is, don't let um, people like Fitz run around freely in your colony. They will cause chaos. If you can't, uh, if you can tame them in any way, you should better be getting rid of them. We're going to do that off camera though. So nothing, nobody can, nobody must feel too bad. And we get new sheep. I mean, we had sheep at the end of another episode and we get sheep at the end of the, this episode. What's up here? So thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to get into new topics in the next episode. Sadly, we can't recruit Fitz. That's really bothering me a little bit, but well, such is life. Drop your comments down below. Leave a like on that video if you want to make it more visible. And of course, leave a subscription on my channel and turn on those notifications if you like that video. I do daily content so you don't miss anything out after that. Also, down there in the text box, uh, description box, you'll find my Twitch channel where I do daily streams, so you might want to check that out too. I wish you a wonderful day and let, let me thank you one more time for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.